Yesterday, Sieraji spoke about Sambhojanga. Sambodhi is one thing, Anga is another. Sambodhi means the knowledge that is able to know completely the Four Noble Truths. Or it can also mean the yogi who knows completely the Four Noble Truths. This knowledge is not a single power. It has the help of companions. One who knows the Four Noble Truths also does not arise without causes. There is support. There are supporting causes for one to become, uh, to know in that way. So today, Sieraji will speak about the, uh, the companions that work together with Sambodhi, that type of knowledge, or the supporting causes for becoming one who knows in this way. There are seven kinds of support. First, there is the sati, that is noting things, what is no, obs- what is noting things. Second is tamavidya, that is the examination and knowing true dhamma one by one. Third, there is virya, that is wholeheartedly making effort without regard for one's body or life. Fourth, there is pasadi, tranquility of body and mind. Fifth is sukha, peace and well-being, happiness of mind and body. Sixth, there is samadhi, collectedness, collectedness of mind. And seventh, upeka, equanimity. So these are the companions which support Sambodhi, or in other words, they are the causes for one to become a person who knows in this way. Among these, when we combine sati with Sambhojanga, it becomes sati Sambhojanga. Tamavijya plus Sambhojanga makes Tamavijya Sambhojanga. Virya together with Sambhojanga makes Virya Sambhojanga. Piti together with Sambhojanga makes Piti Sambhojanga. Pasadi with Sambhojanga makes Pasadi Sambhojanga. Samadhi together with Sambhojanga, Sati Samadhi Sambhojanga, and Upeka together with Sambhojanga makes Upeka Sambhojanga. So all together there are seven factors. Sati, translated very simply, it means to recollect or to make note of. So this sati, this recollection, making a note of, is a is a cause, is a is a companion factor that occurs with sambodhi, or it is the cause for a person to become sambodhi. So here, to call sati recollection or making a note of something is very simple but where is it that one should make a note of and is it just ordinary uh, taking taking making a note of one's wife or one's business recollecting uh, what one has to do so what what sort of sati is this and uh, where should one have this recollection? 
So to understand sati, one should know what is the opposite of sati. And one should also know what words have the same or similar meaning to sati. What are the synonyms for it? Its opposite is pamara. There are things which should be avoided and things which should be undertaken. Neglecting to avoid things that should be avoided. Neglecting to undertake things which should be undertaken. This neglect, forgetfulness, carelessness. This is pamara. This this carelessness is the opposite of sati. Negligence is the opposite of sati. This forgetfulness is the opposite of sati. And sati is the opposite of these qualities. The opposite of forgetfulness, negligence, carelessness. The, the opposite of, of pamara is apamara. The A in front of pamara makes it the opposite of the original meaning. So apamara has the uh, meaning of being meticulous, careful, diligent, heedful, not forgetting, always applying sati, not being negligent, not being careless, not being forgetful. So sati is equal to apamara. All human beings on the world in the, in the world have a duty to avoid what should be avoided and to undertake and carry out things which should be done. If one neglects to avoid things which should be avoided, if one is forgetful about this, then one will get bad results. And if one doesn't make the effort, if one forgets to do things which should be done, if one doesn't develop what should be developed, if one doesn't uh, pay attention to, to these things, take care, be heedful, then one won't get good results. So one gets bad results and one misses out on the good. So this is ne negligence, carelessness, forgetfulness. And if on the other hand, we, are, uh, we aren't negligent, we avoid what should be avoided, then we won't get bad results. And we take, the, we take the care to undertake the things which should be undertaken. We aren't careless in this area. Then good results will gradually come to us. And eventually we will become fulfilled. The Buddha used the word ducharita for these things which are to be avoided. They are misdeeds or uh, bad practices. And in oneself, if one doesn't have shame or fear regarding these things, if one doesn't have any sense of uh, sympathy or any ability to put oneself in another's place and understand how they feel, then one will do these misdeeds. One will say things that are wrong and one will plan, think things that are wrong. Acts of killing, stealing, adultery, these are physical misdeeds. These are ducharitas performed with the body. And then there are, there's lying, harsh speech, slander causing people to be divided, and frivolous talk, speaking in a way that is completely without benefit. These are all misdeeds 
ducharitas, which are con connected with speech, verbal, ver verbal misdeeds. And then there's wanting to take things wrongly from other people, wanting to harm or destroy others, and not having any sense of for thinking things, for example, like when we die, that's it. If I do something wrong, it doesn't matter. It makes no difference to do wrong or to do good. These are mental misdeeds, mental ducharitas. So these ten ducharitas, um, the, the ten things, the misdeeds that the Buddha called ducharitas, if one has some wisdom and ability to reflect, one can tell that these are things which should be avoided. And the opposite of these ducharitas is whether it's out of moral shame and moral fear regarding unwholesome things, or whether it's because one understands how it would feel to have those things done to oneself, then one avoids doing these misdeeds. And in that way, good deeds are done. Sucharitas are performed by one. So everyone, every community, every person from a young age should understand this. But instead, when people don't understand about misdeeds, then mostly one commits, uh, one is not able to avoid doing misdeeds. And therefore one be behaves immorally. And the conclusion that can be drawn is that this happen happens because people are living without sati people just let their minds go wherever they want, wherever the mind wants to go, they let it. So when one lets one's mind go, then one neglects to avoid the things that should be avoided, and one neglects to do the things which should be done. So this pamara is the worst of dhammas. The Buddha starting from where he was, his immediate environment, looking over the whole world, look to see which, is, which are more numerous, wise people or fools. And he looked at what fools do. What is it that they do? And one who is uh, stupid and foolish in Pali Dumedo, they neglect to avoid the things which should be avoided. They're careless about doing the things that should be done. And this is how they waste their time. So in other words, one can say that this pamara becomes strong and people flow along with a heavy current of misdeeds, performing misdeeds. So all over the world, people, most people are immoral. And in this way, the world is being destroyed. The destruction of the world doesn't happen because of the heat rising, because of fires, because of ice. They be, it happens because of individual, the destruction of the individual by, through their morality. And it's the world of being, sata loka, that is destroyed. Apamarancha medawi danang satangwa rakati. So this means that uh, one who has some wisdom, Medawi, one who has wisdom, when they have to speak, 
with those uh, near to them, whoever they must speak with, they reflect first before they speak or do or plan some action they think about whether it is beneficial or not they reflect on whether it is suitable or not so they guard their apamata they guard they guard this as if it were a valuable possession something that is valuable one has to work to obtain and it's very precious so one one should protect these things which are valuable and those who are here who have obtained good noting who have worked diligently and, pre and gained good noting they feel they cherish each noting they work consecutively so that not even a second is missed not even a, a one second of because even one second of missing to note the arising objects kilesas will enter the mind so this description in pali that the wise one guards apamata as though it were a precious possession is very appropriate for yogis who are meditating continuously in this way in another place, the Buddha said to encourage those who lived with mindfulness, apamado amatapadang. Apamado, that means not neglecting to undertake what is good, not neglecting to avoid what should be avoided. This is the cause for coming to an end of, of death, amatapadang. When one is born, one encounters suffering personally. One encounters suffering due to one's family because of worry, sorrow, concerning them regarding one's job, one's position. One encounters suffering. One encounters suffering because of the things that one possesses. So there's sorrow due to loss, lamentation, grief, despair. And each time we have a new life, although having a new life is good from a certain pers perspective, in each life, although we want to stay young, we won't. We get old. We want to live, but we have to die. We want to be well, but we get sick. And sometimes even people with illnesses, they even want to kill themselves because of the sadness that they feel. So if one thinks about it, there's really a lot of things that are not very pleasant about having a new life. There's a lot that is wearisome. And there's very little happiness. And people who see like that think not having a new life would be good. So with no new life, is what is meant by amata. Amata is amata means that which is free of death. And to get this freedom from death, the apamata is the cause, the path. So with uh, with this, one has to not be careless, not be negligent regarding avoiding what needs to be avoided and doing what needs to be done. The Dhamma of Satipatthana Bhavana, the practice, is about this, not neglecting what needs to be avoided, not, to, not neglecting to avoid what needs to be avoided, not neglecting to do what needs to be done, 
what should be done. The practice of satipatthana is to observe every ari arising object, always guard the mind with vigilant mindfulness. This is the cause to gain the Dhamma that is free of death. So this Pamada, just see how bad it is. The Buddha divided Pamada into three parts, the gross, the medium, and the subtle Pamada. And gross Pamada occurs when people commit physical, uh, physical, verbal, and mental misdeeds, commit killing, stealing, adultery, lying, speak harshly, cause quarrels with their speech, speak frivolously. These are four types of verbal misdeeds. And they don't know that this is wrong to do. They don't know uh, uh, the error in this. So they let their minds go freely with regard to physical, verbal, and mental misdeeds, not just one time. They give their mind free reign and uh, the time and again, the mind is, because of, the, because of their mind, they commit actions, speech, and mental misdeeds. So, this pamada is the worst. And a person, for a person without moral shame or moral fear, without any sense of how other people feel when, when they're harmed. For such a person, it is very hard for them to detach from committing misdeeds. So they, um, not only, th there's, the, there is negligence regarding what should be done and what should be avoided and people who are like that are called negligent, pamata, negligent, forgetful person. And for someone who is like that, it's very difficult in one's life, in one's entire life, it's very difficult to, uh, to s s get out of that situation. So, Pamada is like that, and to go from there to Apamada. When Pamada is prominent in one's mind, then one's physical, verbal, and mental behavior are not clean because one is committing misdeeds, and one doesn't see the faults of doing so. One doesn't see what's wrong with that. So one's physical and verbal behavior is not civilized, and therefore it's not peaceful, not delightful. So one who understands that these should be avoided whether it's because they feel moral shame and moral fear, or because they understand how other people feel. Such a person avoids doing misdeeds with apamada. One doesn't neglect anymore to avoid doing what should be avoided. And because of the qualities of hiri otapa, moral shame and moral fear, and sympathy for how other people, although one might transgress, transgressing once, one, one won't do it again. One corrects oneself. So when one's mind becomes like this, then this is apamada, this is diligence, heedfulness. And 
one is then free of blame. What one does is blame, blameless. Not, to, not, uh, not worthy of criticism. One's behavior becomes gentle and civilized. This is delightful. And this is the immediate benefit that one gets from Apamata. The person becomes a true human being. This is what one should do. If Pamata is there, because of this negligence, one, let, one lets one's mind go. And then one commits misdeeds and is not a true human. But when Apamata enters the mind, then because one has Siri Otapa, moral shame, moral fear, and a feeling of sympathy, then although one may err at times, make a mistake, one will correct oneself and not do it again. So in this way, Apamata comes into one's uh, being and one is a true human. So if many people in the world would be like this, just think of how good it would be. So with regard to, so following on this gross pamata, there is also uh, pamata regarding letting one's mind go regarding sense objects. When one allows oneself to indulge in looking at things one likes, hearing sounds one likes to listen to, letting one delight in that, smells, taste, touch, especially touch between the sexes, letting oneself indulge in these. And one doesn't know that these are suffering. Instead of uh, understanding that one should gradually weaken one's attachment to these things, one indulges more and more. And this can lead to misdeeds physically and verbally. So if physical, if one's physical, verbal, and mental, uh, physicality, verba, verbal, sorry, if one's mind, body, and speech are not clean, then this is not good. So when we uh, experience the five sense objects, desirable objects of the five senses, uh, without sati, then they bind us. And one only wants, they bind us in that we want to see that thing. We want to see that, that thing that we like. We want to hear that sound. We want to smell that smell, taste that taste, touch that touch. And when one is bound by the sense pleasures like this, then a person has no more desire for the Dhamma. And one, this can lead to one committing misdeeds regarding the senses. So also, even if that doesn't occur, one can, can let one's mind go freely regarding sense objects which are not, uh, which are entitled to one, which, one's, which one has a legal right to enjoy. So if instead of letting one's mind, uh, letting oneself indulge in sense pleasures that are that one is legally allowed to have, but one gradually weakens one's attachment to these and one gradually reduces one's time spent on these, then one will have a lot of time left for developing the wholesome mind and, do, and doing kusala. So most people spend all their time with sense pleasures. They spend, um, and these, although they are enjoyable, they are a, uh, 
a pleasure that has its danger associated with it. There are various, um, there are many types of disturbances that are caused with our uh, indulgence in sense pleasures. So these pleasures can be said to be fatal. And although people think that this is the best thing that there is in the human life to be able to enjoy good sense pleasures, um, a, good, a goodness that is without danger is better. So most people don't know this and they spend all their times seeking for good sense experiences and they end their lives this way. So in this case one doesn't ever turn to apamada. There's no one doesn't have any, um, when one focuses on obtaining sense pleasures, then one doesn't turn to apamara. But here, uh, here we are working to develop the mind. And in the practice, when one doesn't perform one's actions carefully, going from standing to sitting, sitting to standing, when one bends or stretches all of a sudden, when one doesn't work to make one's observation uh, careful, connected, when, when one doesn't work with uh, continuity throughout the day, this is a form of pamata also. This is also negligence. And those who don't understand or cherish the benefits of the Satipatthana practice are usually careless. So although here we aren't in a situation where we're committing misdeeds, so the, tr the gross form of pamata is not occurring, and we're not in, indulging in sense pleasures. However, when we are doing a task which can elevate one's life, neglecting to do this practice properly is a form of pamata. And it's the subtle grade of, of negligence. When yogis have this subtle grade of negligence, it takes them a long time to develop the practice. What careful yogis can develop in 15 days for yogis who are careless regarding the practice, if they can develop the practice at all, it takes a month and a half or two. So this is because they don't uh, respect the work that they are doing. So in this way, the Buddha divided, uh, distinguished between three grades of negligence or pamara, the gross level, the medium level, and the refined level. And yogis here are observing sila, so there is no gross pamara occurring. And also, there's, we're not indulging in sense objects, so there is no moderate pamata either. But this subtle form of pamata can occur. However, if instead one inserts the subtle form of pamata, then one can become diligent and the factor, the enlightenment factor of sati, sati sambojanga, can become fulfilled. There is much to say about the enlightenment factor of sati, sati sambojanga, but because the hour is up, there's no time today. So tomorrow, Sieroji will conclude what has been started today and he will, um, this factor of sati, the factor of the sambo, sati sambojanga is very important. So he will conclude this topic tomorrow. <laughs>